hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this session of the Permit COE webinar series. Today, Ivan San Noel is going to talk about introduction to qualitative modeling with my boss. My name is Daniel Tomas Lopez. I am involved in Permit COE on behalf of Embel EDI, and I'm going to host this webinar. Before starting, I would like to make you aware that this webinar is being recorded, including the questions and answers section and that the recording will be disseminated afterwards. After the presentation, we will have time for questions. So please use the Q&A button uh, in your Zoom panel for asking questions during the webinar. Permit COE is the HPC Exascale Center of Excellence for Personalized Medicine in Europe. Permit COE focuses on the simulation of cellular mechanistic models, which are essential to translate omics data into medical actions. The performance of cell simulation software is nowadays still not enough to address problems such as tumor evolution or finding personalized treatments for patients. So Permit COE will scale up the software for cell simulations to the present HPC exascale systems in order to enable the creation of uh, models of cellular functions of medical relevance. Uh, Permit COE will achieve this goal through a series of objectives. First, it will optimize uh, selected uh, cell level simulation software to run in pre scale platforms. Second, Permit COE is uh, developing a series of use cases that will showcase the applications of uh, the COE products in different fields of uh, clinical interest, such as drug synergies for cancer treatments or performing uh, multi-scale modeling of COVID-19 virus and patients tissue. Additionally, Permit COE also has as objectives training the biomedical professionals in the use of HPC exascale permit tools, integrating the permit communities into the European HPC exascale ecosystem, and building the basis for sustainability of the Permit COE. Let me now introduce our speaker today, Van San Noel. Van San is a postdoctoral student at the Computational Systems Biology of Cancer Team uh, in Institute Curie. Um, his research interests concern modeling of biological systems and the construction analysis of these models. He did his PhD in applied mathematics, studying simplifications of ODE models. And during his first postdoc, he built a model of RAS uh, map case signaling in Y1 tumor cells. He has experience in tools to simplify the construction and analysis of models, the reproducibility of this work, and in the optimization of numerical simulation workflows. He has been working on Navos for more than three years. So, Van San, the floor is yours. Thanks, Daniel. Let me share my screen. Okay. You should be able to see the full screen now. Yeah, yes. Okay, so let me start. <laughs> So my name is Vincent Noël. I'm part of the Computational Systems Biology of Cancer team at Institut Curie. And today I'm going to introduce you the qualitative modeling and especially with my boss. So uh, first I will have some brief description of modeling of biological systems. Then I will introduce you MABOS, the framework that we are using here in Curie. I will uh, um, explain it on a small example on a model of tumor invasion. Then I will explain you how to concretely use MABOS. And finally, I will present you briefly the MABOS ecosystem, meaning all the tools we are developing around MABOS. So first, let me talk about the modeling of biological systems. So first, why would we model biological system? Uh, the first main point of uh, building models is to summarize what is known and published about the process and to understand which mechanisms are deregulated in disease and why. It also allows to identify possible intervention points to uh, revert deregulation of normal phenotypes. 
and also to anticipate the effects of drugs. And finally, it also allows to optimize the efficacy of treatments and minimize the side effects. So once we have a model built, the model can now answer uh, some questions you, uh, you have about your process, your system. So the example of question that we, a model can answer is what are the process that are activated in an high-grade tumor in colon cancer? Or for example, also should we treat all medulloblastoma patients with the same drug? Or can we understand the differentiation of immune cells? Or also can the response of drug treatment for breast cancer patients be predicted? So to be able to model a biological system, you have to choose a framework and you have uh, mainly two different kinds of frameworks available. The first type, first type is quantitative. So you are, uh, you are able to represent values, components of your system with any quantity. And the evolution of your system will be described in continuous time. But this quantitative uh, frameworks are difficult to write and also uh, simulating these models, especially large models, can be really difficult. And the other framework that you can use are qualitative uh, systems. So here in qualitative, the values are a lot simpler. They just have true or false value. And you don't have a relation of time. You just have a sequence of events. But the advantage of these models is that they are really easy to write. And you can, for example, just say that uh, one component is active or inactive, present or absent, and you will replace this with true or false. And uh, finally, another advantage of qualitative uh, systems is that they are simpler to, uh, to simulate, and thus you can simulate larger models. So let's take a very simple example you have this system A, this system where a protein A will activate a protein B, and both this uh, protein A and B will inhibit another protein called C. So how would we represent this using, for example, ordinary differential equations, which is the main formalism used uh, for quantitative formalism? First, we'll have the definition of rates, how your uh, proteins quantities will evolve in time. So for A, you can see that A doesn't receive any influence. So A will be a fixed value, and it's, in its case, its derivative, its uh, evolution in time will be nil. So the derivative will be zero. For B, B will depend on the action of A. So we have the derivative will increase according to a value of A and a parameter K1. For C, the value of C will actually decrease depending on both A and B, but also C. Otherwise, C can become negative. And this will also be influenced by another parameter. So let's take a very simple example where we have as initial values one for A, zero for B, and one for C. When we simulate this model, we obtain these trajectories where the value of B will be a constant increase and the value of C will decrease with time according to the increase of B, to the value of B. So now let's uh, take another example, this time with uh, qualitative formalism. So here we use Boolean uh, formalism, which is the main one uh, used to uh, model qualitatively a system. So here, our formulas are a lot simpler. A doesn't, uh, again, doesn't, uh, is not influenced by any of the components. So we can just choose the value of A, which in this case will be one. For B, again, B is influenced only by A. So the formula of B will just depend on the value of A. And for C, it will depend on uh, either, B, either A being inactive or B being inactive. So again, let's take some initial values and simulate the system. So here we choose again one for A, zero for B, and one for C. And when we simulate it, we have first the value of B, which will be uh, passed to active, thanks to the, to the action of A. And then once B is activated, it will inactivate C. 
But as you can see, comparing to the previous example, we don't have uh, a continuous description. Here we just have a sequence of events, B is activated, uh, B is activated, C is, is inactivated. So to be able to find some common ground and to find the best of both worlds, we, I will present you today my boss, which uh, is a simulator which uses continuous time Boolean modeling, which was introduced in our team by Gauthier Skoll, Eric Viera, Laurence Calzon, and Emmanuel Barrio. And this then leads to the uh, first, this paper was just description of a framework, and it led to the, uh, to the development of MABOS, which is the simulator we are using. MABOS stands for Markovian Boolean Stochastic Simulator. So as the name says, it uses Boolean formalism, so the simple mechanism I just introduced. It is Markovian, meaning that it will only look at the possible transition uh, from one state, comparing to other uh, Boolean simulator, which will have to build the entire uh, solution space. Markovian means that it's a, it's a lot simpler because you just need to be, uh, to, you just need to care about what is the next step possible. Another important uh, aspect which was added to the pure Boolean formalism in MABOS is the notion of physical time. This time we don't have only a sequence of events, we have a real continuous description of time. And this allows us to represent different time scales in our process, such as transcription or phosphorylation. And so basically MABOS was built to fill the gap between ODE and uh, Boolean modeling. And so MABOS, how does it work exactly? So MABOS, what it does is simulate transition from one Boolean state to another using a Markov chain. And to do this, it uh, computes the transition rates of each possible state, which can be uh, attained from the present state. And depending if the node we want to activate or inactivate is presently active or inactive, we'll have different rates, a rate of activation, we are up, and a rate of inactivation. So as you can see on the right, what it does is uh, start from an initial state and then compute transition to another and another and another Boolean state. And so this will give you a trajectory in time. And you can have uh, several initial states. This initial state in Nabos can be stochastic. So from one, uh, from different initial states, you will have the different transition. But also from the same initial state, you can also have uh, different uh, trajectories because these transitions are stochastic. So you will have a lot of possible trajectories. And so what we do is we simulate a bunch of these trajectories. And from this set of simulated trajectories, we compute the mean trajectories. And so with my boss, what we obtain are probability per state over time. And so how does it work concretely? We need first to define the model, which is done in a file format, which is a BND file, which is proprietary from a bus. And so here, what we will define is mainly the activation and inactivation rate of my bus. So you have the very simple case of A. A will be always active, like we say. So the rate of activation is one, and the rate of inactivation is zero, meaning it will never get inactivated. But we, may, we can also define some more complex case. For example, here for B, we have a formula that I showed before, which is that the value of B will depend on the value of node A. And then what we do is we employ this kind of construct where the rate of activation of A will depend on the logic formula A that we just defined here. And if this formula is true, then the activation rate will be this variable act B which will be defined later. And if it's not true, meaning it shouldn't get activated, then it's zero. And so as I just show you with this act B, we have also the possibility to define parameters which will be uh, explicited in the simulation settings. And now we also allow other Boolean formulas, uh, formats, which are uh, more common, which are mainly SBM equal and BNet. But these don't have the same, 
are not as rich as, uh, as this BND format to be able to, def to define the rates. So once you define the model, you need to define the simulation settings. So one setting you need to define is the initial state of nodes, which can be fixed or stochastic. In this case, we, we, are, we choose a fixed initial values, which we true for A and C and false for B. We also have the option with Mabos to define uh, what we call internal or output variables, meaning that some variables will be hidden from the results so that we can uh, limit the size of the results. So in this case, A is an internal, so it won't be uh, plotted in the graphs. We can also define parameters, like I said. So here we define the activation of B and the activation of C. And we define it as such that uh, the activation of C will take longer than the activation of B. And finally, we have a pure simulation setting. So how much time the simulation will uh, go on? How many of these uh, individual trajectories I explained before we are going to simulate? And the more uh, trajectories, the more accurate the results. Or we can also define if we want to use a physical random number generator or uh, another one. Or also in how many cores uh, we want to, to do our simulation for parallelism. So here is a very simple example of uh, the model I presented you uh, now. So we have first, we start with uh, in a state where only C is active. Then slowly with time, B will get activated. So we switch to another state where both B and C are active. And since B will inactivate C, we then uh, this state now uh, diminish and is replaced by a state where only B is active. We can also look at the same result, but just looking at nodes, not looking at states. So it's simpler because you will be able then to compare it to data where you can you just have the values of specific components of your system. But to the cause that you will lose some information. For example, here, when we look at B or C, we don't know if it's part of a state which contains both B and C, or if B is activated alone or C activated alone. What we can also look at is just the final state of the simulation, which is an approximation of a steady state distribution. Depending on how long and how many samples we simulate, we'll get more and more uh, close to the uh, steady state distribution. But in this case, for example, we stopped the simulation before reaching the steady state, meaning that most of the nodes, uh, most of the states are only B active but some of the states also have C active because they didn't have time to completely inactivate C. So now let's take a simple example on a model of tumor invasion published by Cohen. So here is the model of tumor invasion. It has two input nodes, which are the presence of absence of the, mic of the micro environment or the presence or absence of DNA damage. And from these two input nodes, we are able to define different behaviors of a model, which will be uh, represented as output nodes. So we'll be able to see if we activated or not the epithelial mesenchymal transition, if the cell, uh, the cell cycle has been arrested or not, if the cells are undergoing apoptosis, if act invasion, migration, and, thus, and then metastasis get activated. So when we simulate this model, we will only look at the result of these six output nodes. And so all the other nodes of the system will be internal nodes. So here is an example of a simulation of a model with stochastic uh, initial conditions, meaning that we will sample all the cases where the, ice, the micro environment is present or not and DNA damage is observed or not. And so in this case, we can see that we have a large percentage of our population undergoing apoptosis, 30% of the cells uh, undergoing invasion, 20% of the cells which are classified as nil, meaning that none of the uh, output nodes are active. So the cells are neither in a cell cycle arrest, nor in apoptosis, nor in invasion. And finally, 6% of the cells have their cell cycle arrested. 
So what we can do then is play with initial conditions. And so let's study in this model the influence of the microenvironment. Here we simulate the model with two different initial states, with or without the microenvironment, and without, in both cases, DNA damage. So first, in the case where we don't have a microenvironment, we can see that the cells stays in this nil state where node of an, uh, none of the nodes are active. In this case of this model, it represents proliferation. So the cells are proliferating. And we see that 18% 18, 18 of the cells are not proliferating anymore, have uh, stopped their cell cycle. But now, when we do the simulation with microenvironment, we can see that we obtain a completely different phenotype where all of the cells are undergoing invasion. Now let's go a little further. And so let's again simulate with the microenvironment, but this time let's uh, do two uh, simulations, one with DNA damage and one without DNA damage. So without DNA damage, we obtain the same result we had before of a pure invasive phenotype. But when we activate the DNA damage, we will switch the phenotype and actually 80% of the cells will be undergoing apoptosis, meaning that some cells in our tumor are dying thanks to the presence of DNA damage. Another type of uh, analysis that you can do is study the impact of mutations in our model. So here, first, we simulate, again, the wild type. So we just choose random initial conditions. So we have all the possibilities of phenotype of our model. And now we do a simulation applying this mutation, meaning that whatever happens, the P53 node, which is inside our model, will get activated. And the notch nodes will get inactivated. And we can see that with these mutations, we will obtain, again, a purely invasive phenotype whatever the kind of input values we are using. So here was an example, the simple example of, uh, of a, Mabos, a Mabos analysis on a model. So now let's see how to actually use Mabos. So to use Mabos, uh, the, uh, one of the simple way to use it is using Python. So we have Python bindings called PyMabos, which were initially developed by Nicolas Levy and are now maintained by Aurélien Aldi, Loïc Pelevé, and myself. They are available on GitHub. And you can install easily Mabos from either PyPy or Conda uh, Anaconda. So here is the simplest example you can get. You just load your Mabos uh, library then you load your model with these two files I presented before, the BND and the CFG files. And then you can just run your model and plot the pie chart of the last uh, state result. So here you obtain exactly the same uh, output I presented before. So what you can do also, and again, what I already presented you, is uh, being able to change the initial state of a system. So here, you just define the, uh, the, the node you want to modify the uh, initial values. And then the probability of a node being inactive followed by the probability of a node being active. And so you do this for these two uh, different variables. You run your simulation, and you just plot the result. You can also do uh, mutants, like I presented. So for this, you just take your model and call this mutate function, where you select the node you want to mutate and the state you want to mutate it in. So here we will uh, mutate uh, notch and ICD so that it will stay active, and P53 so that it will stay inactive. And again, you just run the simulation and plot the, uh, the result. What you can also do with PyMabos is just to plot the trajectories uh, in time. So here you see uh, the different states evolving in time until reaching a steady state. And this is actually a good example of why we need also sometimes to, uh, to hide some variables from the result. Because here only with three output nodes, we get eight different uh, possible states. And if we add just one more variable, it will double the number of possible states. And so really quickly, the number of states will explode. And so that's why being able to 
hides some, uh, some notes from the result is really useful. And then you can also just get the raw values directly as a Pono data frame so that you will be able to use it in any of your uh, data analysis uh, frameworks in Python. And so this uh, library, uh, PyMaBoss, is part of the uh, Kolomoto Interactive Notebook. So Kolomoto is a consortium of, uh, of software and teams working on uh, logical models. And so within this uh, interactive notebook, we can use different uh, tools, which are uh, mostly intercompatible. And you will be able to then save your, uh, your analysis, your workflow, and ensure its uh, reproducibility. Another way to use Mabos, which is very recent, we just developed a web interface for Mabos called WebMabos. And so it's everything inside the browser. You don't have to install everything. And you also don't have to look at all the details like the BND and the CFG files. So let me just do a quick demo. So here you arrive on the landing page of Mabos. So you can already uh, look without being, having an account. You can look at your demo project. And so here you have two available models, including the Cohen model I just presented you. So you just click on it. This will show you the graph of interaction. And you can choose then different kind of, uh, of layout if you want to represent it. And you can just simulate it. So just type new simulation. Here, you will define the name of a simulation to be able to retrieve it later, the maximum time of a simulation, the number of individual trajectories that uh, you want to simulate. You also have options like uh, discrete time, so you will have just a sequence of events, and also the uh, random generator. You can also define initial states. So in this case, all the initial states are at zero, except the DNA damage and the microenvironment, which are stochastic at 50%. You will also choose your output nodes. So in this case, I just have the phenotypes I showed you before as output nodes. And you can also define mutants if you want, but in this case, I don't have any mutants. So you just click Submit, and this will launch the simulation and quickly show you the results that I already presented you before. So you have all the, uh, the specific states uh, of the model. You can also look at the trajectories of the nodes probability. So here you have the values for all the uh, possible nodes here. You can also look at the state prob probability trajectory. So here you will have the complete list of possible states with their probabilities in time. And finally, you can look at all the fixed points that were encountered during the simulation. So here you see that you have uh, several fixed points which are steady states. And you can see the different combination of activity or inactivity for each node. And you can also look at, this, uh, at these nodes on the graph, representing which one are active and which one are inactive. What you can also do, but for this you need to create an account, is uh, import models. So for this, I will log in. And here you arrive on your project. So here you can create new project and everything will be stored in this environment. And you can also import a uh, model. So for example, I'm clicking here and I will have a list of all the models in bio models or in cell collective, which are two big repositories of logical model. And we can just click on one model and it will import it. Yeah, maybe the database is off for some reason. But you have to trust me, it will work. <laughs> and so you can also just look at uh, your model. You are able, uh, when you are registered, to modify the model because otherwise the demo account is, uh, is read only. You cannot modify everything. So here, you're able to modify your model. Just look, for example, at the, uh, at the logic formula for all of your nodes and the activation and inactivation rates. So you can just modify them there. 
You can also modify initial values, just setting exactly what percentage of, uh, of the time you want the node to be active or inactive. You are also able again to choose your uh, output nodes to set the different parameters. Here I just have one parameter in this model or to change the simulation settings. One important part that you can't do also without being, uh, with an, having an account are the sensitivity analysis. So what you can do with this sensitivity analysis is study the behavior of different mutants. So for example, we can test all combination of single mutants Say meaning that we will do one simulation where we take the uh, a specific nodes and we mutate it uh, off or on, and we'll do this for every node. And you can also do this for double mutants. So looking at all the combinations of activation and inactivation of several nodes. You can for this restrict the number of candidates. You are not forced to, uh, to modify all the, to mutate all the nodes. And you can also, again, change the outputs of your uh, analysis. So this analysis can take a little time. So I already did one that I can load and I can show you. So here I did an analysis of uh, not all nodes, but most nodes and the double mutants, meaning all the combinations of inhibition and activation of every node. So here we have a lot of simulation. We have around 2,000 simulation, more or less. And something very nice that we can do with it is we can look for say, uh, specific phenotypes. So for example, let's say I want to look at which phenotype, which double mutant will induce uh, invasive phenotypes. So I can just click on this filter, say that I want to look at the states where we have both invasion, migration, and cell cycle arrest. And I want uh, to find the mutant which have at least 0.99 uh, probability of showing this phenotype of invasion. So here I just click submit, and this will filter all the uh, simulations to look for only for these phenotypes. So as you can see here, we have 10 on this first page and 12 total phenotypes, uh, double mutants, which show this phenotype, including the P53 negative notch activation that I presented just before. So this is uh, an example of what uh, WebMaboss can do. So please, uh, this is available on uh, maboss.curie.fr slash WebMaboss. So you can just register there, create an account, and start playing with MaBoss. So here are the slides I prepared just in case the demo was not working, but the demo got cooperated. And now I'm going to present you what I call the MaBoss ecosystem. So the MaBoss ecosystem stands for all the tools that we started to develop on top of MaBoss. So the first one that I wanted to present is called Profile. And it, uh, what it does is personalization of model. So suppose you take your model uh, that you built from biological knowledge. So you already have your model. And then you take some omics data. In this case, it's mainly mutation counts and rna -say bulk uh, data. So this will build you some patient profiles that you can use then to personalize your model. Meaning that with this framework, you will get uh, a specific model for each patient. And then you, what we will be able to do is simulate every model for each uh, specific treatment on each patient and look at the patient specific response. So this, uh, this tool is available on our GitHub. Another part of the MaBoss ecosystem that we are developing is called UpMaBoss, and it, uh, it leads with population models. So here with MaBoss, we only have probabilities of state in our model, but we don't have any variable tracking the quantity of a cell population. We don't, we don't have a notion of cell division or cell death, which uh, would lead to increase or decrease of a population. So we developed a new, uh, a new framework, which is based on MaBoss, called UpMaBoss for update population MaBoss. And here you have an example of a work uh, we did, which was led by Kekoli uh, et al, and it's published in Frontier in Physiology, 
where you will be able to track the different population of uh, tumor. For example, you will see the size of the tumor and so the number of uh, the size of population decreasing according to treatment or the increase of population of cells of the immune system. So this is something we are still developing, but which looks very promising. And finally, another part of the, uh, of the MABOS ecosystem that we are also very involved with is called Physibus. So Physibus is uh, the interaction between PhysiCell, which is an agent-based uh, framework developed at the University of Indiana. And so PhysiCell, what it can do is uh, each cell will be an agent and will have its own uh, characteristics, such as the cell cycle, its growth, uh, possible migration, and possible interaction with other cells. Cells will also interact with the environment, so we can have a space around which, uh, in which the cells are present, which will contain uh, different molecules, such as oxygen or, for example, virus. And so the cells will be able to interact with the, uh, this component of the environment. And finally, where, uh, what we added to make it feasible is the possibility for every of these, of, the, of these cells to have its own Boolean model inside and to make its own simulation to be able to uh, decide its fate according to the input it receives and to the environment, being uh, molecules in the, in the environment or interactions with other cells. So to conclude, uh, since the creation of MABOS, we, we, uh, we involved a lot of work into the simplification of its usage by developing the Python library and now by developing the web interface so that everybody can use it simply just in their browser without having to code anything. We are also very much involved in the improvements uh, in scalability, especially as a part of the Permetco project, where we are developing uh, MABOS uh, MPI, uh, MPI uh, capabilities uh, for MABOS, so that MABOS can simulate really large models on NP HPC environments. We also have done a lot of improvement in compatibility. So now it's, uh, you can use other type of model mainly BN, uh, BNET files and, uh, most importantly, SBML qual files. We keep adding new tools on top of MABOS, such as the one I just presented. And also, we are working on the integration of MABOS into agent-based frameworks, such as PhysiCell, but also CompuCell3D. So this was all I had to present for you. Now, if you want to write your question, please use the Q&A button. And meanwhile, I can already introduce you the next webinars, which will be uh, first uh, biomedicine, supercomputers and simulation in silico experiments and its application in cancer research. This will be uh, the 14th of uh, December. And next year, we'll have logical modeling of signaling network with Selenopt and Carnival, which will be the 20th of January. And this will Thank be you very so much. Thank you for awesome. attention. Yes, thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much for your for your for the uh, for your presentation. Um, uh, just to mention now that you put, you already put there the slide of the upcoming webinars. And in the webinar next month, the uh, one of December, um, we will talk about physics cell. So uh, okay. connection with this webinar of, of today. Very good. Uh, okay, so please uh, go ahead and write your questions using the Q and A button. Uh, we have a, a couple of questions already, so uh, we'll go ahead. Um, there was a question in the beginning, in uh, most of the introduction, that said, is it possible to quantify errors due to the approximation from quantitative to qualitative model? Uh, it's, it's always difficult to say. Like, you will always have some errors. And in, for example, you will have uh, some proteins for which you don't have a clear off and on state. And so for this, uh, that you will have to look at the data and see if you can find really some, uh, some binary, uh, some, uh, 
some binomial distribution where you can have really some of the values are low, some of the values are, are high. And here you can really see, okay, it's really uh, either on or off, but sometimes it won't be. And then one of the things we can do with Boolean models is to define uh, multiple states. We don't have only inactive and active, but we can have something like a middle activation, for example. So you want to look at the, at, to really quantify the error, you again, you will have to look at the data, but we also have solutions in case you don't have, you need much more precision than just on and off. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question. How do you decide which variables to hide in your analysis? To hide, yeah. This is really dependent on the kind of analysis you do. Like the, the most uh, the, the most simple case is just to look at the outputs of your model, but sometimes you also want to see, for example, you know that you obtain this a, a, a certain phenotype after your simulation, but you don't understand exactly why. So for this, you will need to look upstream of uh, what are the activators of the phenotype you're interested in. And so in this case, you will redo a simulation with more uh, more nodes just to try to understand exactly what, uh, how the activation is occurring. So it's really dependent on your analysis. The only thing you should be careful of is not to have too much of them. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Can we import models from a local file, meaning that they are not in bio models yet? Yes, yes, you can import files in uh, both BNET, SBML, MABOS, and also GeneSIM formats. And you can also export them locally, uh, download them on your, uh, on your computer in, again, these four different formats. Okay, 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 okay. Um, yeah, one question. Uh, based on the, on the graphs of, of the interactions of a system, uh, how do you define uh, the Boolean formulas of the model? So this is a, a tricky question because uh, this I didn't introduce you exactly. So for example, when the, in the simple case I presented, I told you that you need to have either A inactive or B inactive to inactivate C. But actually, according to just looking at the graph of interaction, you don't know this exactly. It could be also that you need both of them to be inactive at the same time to, uh, to, inactivate C, uh, to, act, to activate C. So this will depend. And for this, we have several, uh, several approach. The first one will be to choose the simplest formula we can think of, meaning that we'll just take the different, uh, different actors and just glue them with R. So in the, uh, this is what I did. I just took uh, that I needed to have A inactive or be inactive, but it could also be an end. And so this will depend on the exact mechanism. So you can also do some fine tuning with this, or you can also use some kind of automatic approach that we are developing, but I didn't present it here, where we will look, uh, we will define our interaction graph. We will define the kind of behavior that we want the model to have. And we will build an ensemble of models which are all compatible with these two constraints. So here we will get uh, a large number of models and basically they will cover all the possible formulas still with the, uh, being compatible with uh, the behaviors and the phenotypes you want to observe. So this is another method which is uh, a lot more complex but that we are actively working on. Okay, okay. Thanks for that response. Okay, we have a um, few more questions coming in. Um, so are there any limitations with WebMaboss compared with Maboss? Yes, indeed. We have some limitations that uh, we added to prevent to have uh, either some really, really heavy simulation that won't finish uh, quickly enough and that we didn't want to, uh, to just stuck the, uh, have the interface stuck while you wait for it. And also the limitation in the size of the result, which will also crash the interface. Like again, if you choose to have all your nodes in a big model as output nodes, 
the result will be so large to uh, to represent on the screen that it will crash the interface. So we also added this uh, this limitation. And we also have a limitation also for initial states, where in the CFG file, you can define some really complex initial states. But in the web interface, I wanted to keep it simple so you can just define per node the percentage of activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. 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 Um, another question. Could I have different processes with different rates of change in a smaller network in the model? without affecting the entire rate of the progress of the model? Yes, you will be. Uh, I'm not sure you understand what you mean, but uh, by uh, the whole the scale of the system. But you can define for every node its activation or, or inactivation rates. So the idea is that nodes will be linked to some, um, some function, some molecular function. So like, for example, nodes will be need, linked to the phosphorylation of uh, one protein. So for this, you will choose a rate which is really high because this is a process which is really fast. But if you want to represent, if your node represents, for example, the transcription of uh, uh, a protein, so the synthesis of a protein, this will be a slow process. So for this, you will define some really uh, small uh, rate. So this is basically on a per node basis that you define this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think that answers the question, but uh, otherwise, yeah, the, the participant can write, or if you want to ask yes, uh, uh, by, by voice, we can, you can also, we can give you the, the option to talk. Okay. Um, we have another question. So once the models are uploaded, which is the confidentiality feature? Are they stored somewhere? And then specifies, I'm asking as our clinical industry partners are very much interested in the confidentiality part. Well, this is a good question. And for now, I have to admit that we didn't think of it. So the models will be stored in our server because we need it uh, to, uh, to, to do the simulation. And it won't be encrypted since we need the, uh, the uh, decrypted version the, uh, to be able to simulate it. But that's something that we can probably think of uh, at some point to be able to have your value, uh, your model somewhere. Yeah, I need to think about it because I didn't thought at all about this. And I need to see basically how, where we simulate it to be able to know where the model needs to be. I, don't, I, hope, I hope I'm clear, but yeah, that's, that's a very good question that I didn't thought of. For now, they're just stored on, uh, on our server. It's definitely an interesting question and to, to yeah. think of, of, of it, yeah. Okay. Um, just to, just to be, uh, just to be uh, more precise, like if you, want, you only with your account will be able to access it. Other users of WebMaboss won't be able to access it. But uh, me as the administrator of WebMaboss will be able to access it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. And is there, is it, um, so that the data will be stored for the analysis and once it's it's finished, will it stay there indefinitely? And for the moment, does it stay there permanently or? Yeah, it will stay there permanently, but you have also the choice to remove it yourself. And if you remove it, mm -hmm. it will be completely removed from the server. Okay, okay. So I, th I think in, in connection with that question, um, yeah, is that something you will think for the future as new features for Maboss or for WebMaboss? Or what other features are you considering for WebMaboss? Well, one thing that uh, is really high on my priority list is to add the personalization of models so that you can also upload the data set to WebMaboss and personalize a model with it and do your classical analysis of WebMaboss, but on the uh, on personalized models. So this is one thing. Uh, the other is also to add uh, other parts of the Mabos ecosystem, such as the population model of Mabos, so that you will be able also simply to use them and to uh, and to simulate them. And finally, also one part that, uh, especially as a part of Permetco, that we probably need to look at, is the uh, possibility to run our simulation in some 
in some uh, HPC environments and also perhaps links to the question of confidence, confidentiality in some specific environments where we, we have more insur insurance so that we can access the model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we don't have any more questions at the moment. Let's give it uh, uh, a minute to see if anyone else has um, any more questions. Um, meanwhile, maybe if you don't mind going to the previous slide, the one of the upcoming webinars, so just people have it in, in, in mind and the registration is already open. So you can go to the uh, Permit COE website and uh, register there for the, for the um, upcoming webinars. So, yeah, I think there are no more questions. So thanks a lot, Evan Sam, for the for the for the webinar. It was a, a great session. Um, yeah, and hope to see you in the future uh, permit COE webinars. So thank you very much, and thank you all for attending. And thank you for the opportunity. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>